Hi everyone. Hi guys. Lovely to see you. Um, Happy New Year again. Um, it's lovely to see you. We're sorry that we're not in our loft again, but obviously, you know, things are as they are. Third and we lockdown. To still bring you content. Third one already. God, I've stopped counting now. I'm just going to assume that we stay indoors. It's just another lockdown. Yeah. He says, "Let's have a party." Um, but it, we want to bring you content, so we thought we'd we thought we'd basically sit at home and chat about probably our favourite. I would say our mutual favourite fragrance house in the world. Yeah, and this. Fair. I mean, this this video is it's just a bit of a bit of fun. We we we've just been putting it um, together, and it's just it, it's a house more than any other that we love. You know, if you if you look at our past videos, we've devoted uh, whole videos to Gerlau. We even last year, it seems like a lifetime ago, but last year we went to Paris and we went to um, the Gerlau boutique on, uh, on the Champs Elysees, yeah. and we were kind of given a bit of back. Um, stage access, which is really cool, as well as chatting with the people that work there. And we also we went to the Os Jedi. yeah, which was very yeah. exciting. We went to um, the Osmotec in Versailles as well to smell some of the original versions. Um, and Joe, you've actually still got some of the tests. I've got them all here. Because if you go, if um, you go to the um, the Osmotech to smell all these ancient fragrances, they give you the test strips in these little kind of polythene -y kind of plastic bags. Here they are. <laughs> so we have Jiki, Larble, Shalimar, and Mitsuko, and original these versions. smell almost just as strong as they did the original versions of these formulas. <laughs> um, and I keep them inside my my trusty perfume, the guide. I've got two of these because this one I left outside on a beachfront property a couple of years ago and the salt and sandy sea air sort of ruined the front. You probably can't see that. So I've got two of these, but inside it, I keep these um, and all of the other samples from the Osmotech. And the book smells incredible. So, yeah. So this is, we. Um, it's not often we do, a, we haven't done a top 10 or a top 20 for ages, so we thought we would do our top 16. Yes. Yeah, um, it's the round number, isn't it? So this this is not the best Guerlain fragrances ever. These are Guerlain fragrances which we own, and they are in the order of our favourite. Yeah. Um, so we've got so for some a, of... Sorry, go, go on. on. Sorry, Dan. I was just going to say, sorry, it's, a, it's an impossible task because we, I mean, we love all of these, and it just becomes a question of, which one do I enjoy slightly more today than I did last time I wore it? You know, it, it, it's, it could change tomorrow. It could change in a month's time. It was I really, think. I mean, that's why we, we thought it'd be fun to do just before we, we hit record, we were going through and trying yeah. to sort out this order and it's really difficult. And on a different day, we might have chosen a slightly different order, but they are, it's our choice. I'm sure people will say, what are you doing? Putting that above that? But that, it's, it's, um, it's where we are. And for some of them, we've got different formulations of them, um, which has possibly a, a, affected our choices. Some more modern versions, some older versions. I mean, yeah, yeah. Gerland, I, I think I was looking up and there are over 700 fragrances have been released. Wow. Um, so we're not doing a top 700, sadly. <laughs> of no. course. Although we should try and do that at some point. <laughs> there, there are some omissions. There are some obvious. These are ones where we have bought and lived with we bought bottles and we live with them and we love them. So, are we, so where are we, do we start? Are we ready to get stuck in? So, number 16, I have to say, for me, this was the only one which was easy. It's, I mean, it's even the fact that it's called, that people call this Lidge. L'instant de guerre. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 extreme. So, this is, uh, when did it come out? It came out in 2005, Bertrice Piquet. Um, this bottle I didn't buy. Someone gave it to me because they didn't like it. Um, and I don't... It's the, it's the only fragrance in this list. I've got to say that I don't like... And it's also... When I first started getting into fragrance and I started, first started watching videos, this is the one which came up all the time and people said, Lidge, Lidge, oh, it's this great fragrance. For me, it's not in the same league as the other no, 15 no. fragrances. Agreed. On this, on this, it's it smells just slightly trashy. It it doesn't it, to me. It smells. It just smells a bit cheap. It it doesn't smell as good as the rest. Yeah, of them. I always get a vibe a vibe of a really nice hair shampoo or something like that. It's yeah. you know it's very pleasant to smell, but it's just not. 
it's it's not anything groundbreaking, exciting, and it doesn't feel like it has that Guerlain quality about. Maybe it. it's just because we're a couple of fat old bastards and we like our you know fragrances a bit more you know complex and sophisticated. Yeah, it probably is that too. But if you're if you're looking you know if you're looking at our channel, you're probably not looking for a kind of clubbing scent. No, no. Lidge. I hope not. It's even like got, got this funny rattle. I don't know if you can hear it. Something's broken in the top. Anyway, oh God. Lidge. That was an easy number 16. What? They get more difficult from here. They do get a bit more tricky. I mean, so number 15 is one that I have, which is this little bad boy, Mm. Um, which I have to say, I think is really pleasant and I do like it. It's Comedy. it's it's a it's a sort of 2014 release. It's everything that you could want in a good modern, clean sort of freshy designer. But it's done really well. You've got the, you've got the sort of fruity notes. You've got the vetiver. You've got a bit of, a bit of leather. You've got some, you know, you've got some tonka. All of the sort of the standard, you know, the standard must hits. Um, hmm. But it's just done really well, and it's Absolutely. very pleasant. And I would, I would rather have this on my shelf than you know, Blue de Chanel or Sauvage or Versace, Dylan Blue or whatever it might be. I think it's another step up in terms of quality. But of course, this is from the modern era. So this I'm autom the... I'm automatically assuming that things are not, I'm not going to be anywhere near the quality of. I mean, you know, uh, like, let, let, yeah, let's just see like how, how you know, how, how it plays out for the rest of the list. So I'm just going to say, yeah. so the next fragrance before, before we kind of reveal what it is, number 14 out of the top 16. This is the one that when we visited the Guerlain Boutique um, last, uh, what well, was your birthday, wasn't it? So it's last, um, not last November, yeah, but the November, November before, when we were actually allowed to go out. Oh yeah, so it's a year and a half ago, wasn't it? Um, uh, this, you know, we spent, what, four hours in the shop? We smelled everything in the shop. And yeah. this is when we came out. This is the one which my wife said it was her favourite. <laughs> number 14? Yeah. Yeah, so... This little bad boy here, which is queer intense, leather yeah. intense. Um, I mean, you said you said to me in the shop, which I thought was interesting. It doesn't smell like a gallon. I remember that distinctly. Mm. You, you know, you you felt that it was nice, but it just didn't smell like gallon, and that's true. It absolutely, it doesn't. It's all. It's it's a real sort of saddle leather, um, and it's really, it's really potent stuff as well. Yeah, I, I think maybe even some slightly rough edges around the around the opening. Yeah, it it did smell. I think what I what I felt is that if th that had been released as a Tom Ford private blend, it would have been an absolute blockbuster smash hit. You know, it, 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 yeah. it, it for that that kind of market, if oh, it, it really one was. of those one of those bold um, Tom Ford um, bottles. Um, yeah, I mean, I said like, yeah, my wife loved it. It's so. Beautiful, big, bold, rich, complex flavor. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is lovely. It's very like it's it's very seventies to me somehow. I don't know why, but you know, it's it's what I imagine. You know, a, like a cabin in the woods smelling like with lots of lots of sort of smoky fire going. You're wearing all your leather to keep warm. It's it's very much what's his name? Robes 08, that guy. It's what he would call a rough and tumble leather. Yeah. As he always yeah. likes to refer to them. Um, but it, but it does get smoother and smoother, and it, but you know, it, it becomes something really quite beautiful and sort of smells very classical in a way as well. Even though it doesn't smell like Guerlain, mm. it does smell very classical somehow. Yeah. Smoky suede, and I like the bottle. I have to say, that brown colour is slightly weird. Mm. And of course, you get the little the little B in the top there. I hadn't even noticed that. Well, I'll as tell you what, we'll, we'll carry on because the, standard. the next one come, comes in the same bottle. And yeah, and I hadn't even there noticed one of these. I forget to focus these little, this little B. So this is, if you can see it in the light, it's Ensemble Mythique. So this is the, this was originally, uh, came out a couple of years uh, before, was it Ensemble Mythique d'Orion? Was that, that, yeah. was, that, was that what it's called? Um, I mean, this this is a really so. Good this stuff. is when did this come out? This is also 2019. It was released um, in, in this this bottle, rose, um, and incense and aldehydes and ambergris. This I'm just going to just have a quick spray. I'm not going to spray all of Nice combo there. But it really is. 
the incense and the aldehyde is just bright and energetic and then the yeah. rose comes out of that and a wrench becomes more plush and is rounded up by this sweet salty warming ambergris it's a beautiful beautiful fragrance again not not one which if i had smelt you know blind i would have necessarily said um was a girl fragrance but it's one that you know out, out of the, the kind of modern girl fragrances i really do enjoy and i think it's a beautiful yeah we put together fragrance yeah, that's the thing with a lot of the more modern stuff is that it is really, really well made, and it is really, oh yeah, beautifully made. It yeah. is really nicely put together. You you can never fault the quality. It just becomes a question of of, of originality and comparison, doesn't it? That that's what you get with a great house like this. You you know you always be comparing everything to the to the real masterpieces of the of, mm. the, of the house. I would say. So the next fragrance number twelve. So this is one we're going back. I mean, this is actually one which has been kind of re... I was reading up on it, and I think it originally was 1959, then it was redone in 62, 82, 2000, and it's probably been reformulated again. Um, it, it seems, you know, maybe a crime that it, it, it's so low, but so this is my bottle of it. Yeah. It is vetiver. Have you got your oils there as well? or? Have... I don't have mine here. I, half of them are in Al's Court. Mm. I've got the modern. I've got the modern version of that. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems a crime. That as in the it's... as in the pre, you know, the pre wooden caps. Yeah, the sort of the old silver caps. I mean, this 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 is a, a, a classic, beautiful. You know, one of the great gentlemen's fragrances of the twentieth century. Yeah, as, as long as well as the. It is wonderful. You've got lime. You've got tobacco. There's some nutmeg. Oh, it's a beautiful. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, it's at once it's rugged and, and and kind of powerful and strong, but it's also beautiful and complex with and delicately nuanced as well. Yeah, I think the tobacco is the thing that I find the most interesting in that actually, more mm. than the vetiver itself. Yeah, it gives it just gives it something more. I think vetiver is one of those notes we like we were talking about, weren't we? That yeah. is just not that exciting, perhaps on its yeah. own as a sort of, not, it wouldn't be a solid floor, but that idea mm. as a concept. I'm yet to find a pure out-and-out -out vetiver fragrance yeah. that really, really excites me. Maybe something like Sycamore from Chanel starts to yeah, yeah, get me yeah. going. But there's, you know, there's other stuff going on there as well as the... It's, but it's, yeah, I think I, I, I'm the same. There's, there's not even a, a solid floor, but because this isn't a solid floor, because as you say, there's so much tobacco and other things, but I, I can't yeah. think of, of, of a vetiver dominant fragrance that I really love. And so maybe that's just a, a taste thing and why yeah. it's only number 12. But okay. it's damn good. It's damn good. Next. And a, a fragrance which doesn't get talked about so much, maybe because it was discontinued. Coriolan. Look at this. Uh, yes. Uh, and so this is supposed cool to be, bottle, I think it? It, it's designed um, on a, a kind of a, 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 a sack that you would keep um musket um bullets in essentially so it's a yeah you know, kind of an animation back so and despite you know the name of Coriolan when you think this big kind of strong roman fighting kind of emperor this is um you think you you think it's going to be a aromatic fougere when you first put on a kind of slightly citrusy halfway between a kind of cologne fragrance and a, an aromatic fougere but as you wear it it gets more floral when you realize it's actually a sheep bra. Uh, so this is this is uh, Jean Paul Gelin. It's quite late, Jean Paul Gelin. What is it? Ninety eight, and I just think with this one, it was just released at the, at the wrong time. I think rumor has it that he started on it the same time as Derby, and if it came out the same time as Derby, you can really see it, you know, being in that kind of late eighties, early nineties. But in nineteen ninety eight, when we were in CK one and Aquadigio territory, yeah. this was this was never going to do well. Um, it's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame because I really, I really love it. Um, yeah, I, I remember loving it when I smelt it. And I just can't quite remember the smell well enough because I didn't, didn't spend enough time with it. But I must. That's going to be my mission. So, top ten. Easy. <laughs> so we are. What, what, what year are we for the next one? Nineteen ninety-two. Do you want to take this? Ninety-two. Um. So, uh, where are we with ninety-two? Sorry, I'm being. Eritage. Oh, yes, of course. So, Eritage, yes. So, this is a lovely, lovely sandalwood. 
um, creamy sandalwood, uh, and all those beautiful, bright citruses that you have. There it is. Uh, you've got the more the older bottle there, haven't you? Oh, see, this is absolutely of its time. This, you know, this feels very Peter much. Uh, is that, it's always EDP that or the EDT. This is the EDT. I also have the EDP, but not mm, here. I get quite a lot of juniper from this as well. There's the EDP is not here. as good, I think. Yeah, it's it's very aromatic. It, you know, it very much. Yeah, really aromatic. Lots of botanicals, juniper. <sighs> but the, uh, for me, it's all about that sandalwood, and it's it's this lovely, friendly sandalwood. I always refer to this as friendly. Like some sandalwood can feel quite serious and quite, you know, mm. quite austere. This is warm and cuddly. If you could, if you could make a sandalwood that was actually like a vanilla, but not. But but also, I also get, you know, this is this is real kind of eighties, nineties masculine. But it's, but it's so elegantly done, and it's it's the one that you, if you were wearing a suit, you know, as we are now, it would make you feel super super confident. You know, really elegant, really yeah. like walking into the room, be the most impressive person in the room. But yeah. if you also got to the end of the day and you took your suit off and maybe put a t-shirt on and you just wanted to snuggle down on the sofa with someone, it's also got that sexy sandalwood as well. Oh, it's so good. And it doesn't smell dated to me at all. Yeah. And for the, you know, for, for the price that it's in, just that designer price category. it's, just, I, it's... That was like 30 something odd quid, the one I've yeah. got. Amazing. I've heard people say, so I've got one of these silver top bottles, which is the second formulation. And I've, the original one is a kind of gold top. And people have said that actually the, the wooden top you've got is closer to the gold top than this. That's what I've heard. Yeah, well, I've, re I've read the same thing. And I've, I've, also, um, I've also compared this to the EDP. And I've come around to preferring this. Mm. And it's the same with, with my Abbey Rouge. I've got the EDP and the EDT as well. And I prefer now the... EDT, I've sort of, I fluctuated. Yeah, but I, I think often, they rely on having all the brightness and the and the energy. I sometimes get that with, with you know with Galen fragrances because they are they develop so much that if you have an EDT rather than EDP, there's a bit more transparency, so you get yeah. the chance for it all to bloom and and come to life. You right. experience a little bit more of it, don't you? Now, so now we're into serious. Yeah, this is I think. this is um. I, it, this is amazing. This this is so you know low in the list, and this is I mean, it's, it's, I've almost got an empty bottle. My wife wears this a, a lot, so I'm going to have to replace this. I know everyone says you should you shouldn't leave bottles when they get nearly empty, but anyway, it is. What can you do though? I mean, can you, you read can this? Only really drink it. There you go. It's lovely stuff. Almost empty. Leur bleu, the blue hour, the moment at the end of the day, just before the sun goes away, and it's. You know, it's just the, the moment before nighttime and magic happens. And it's just this... Oh, masterpiece. Oh, God, I can't believe we put this at number nine. <laughs> I, mean, I know it's amazing. criminal, but what can we do? I mean, Palma violets, you get beautiful, all these lovely shades of blue and there's heliotrope and stuff in there as well. And oh, I can't believe... Very we edible put it in. fragrance. Yeah. Isn't it? It's <sighs> very... It's very sort of creamy and buttery and... And, and but it makes me think of, of of Debussy and Satie and, yeah. and you know all that kind of like impressionistic music kind of wafting over you, sensual and magical and I love smelling it. With my wife, it's just oh, I can't believe we put it in number nine. Maybe it's I tell you why because there's another fragrance similar to it which which I prefer which which is which is coming up. Um, yeah, it's it I, when I think of that fragrance, I I always remind myself of how much I love it. And then I smell um, Hasu no Hana that I've got from Grossmith. Yeah. And I still keep coming back to the girl and I still think the girl and just does it better. And it's, again, you can buy it for 30 or 40 quid. And yeah. Hasu no Hana is almost 200 quid. And I, but, you know, um, I'd, I'd happily put the girl on, on top of that, on top of that list. But it was, um, it was Sarah McCartney had, um, what is, she, it's, is it an old X-ray she's got or an old, I can't remember. From, we smelt it. And I think it's an X-ray from 1951. Yeah. yeah. Or something silly like that. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping she'll send it to us at some point as a gift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, and that's the thing, you know, as I said, these are our experiences. It's not, I'm not saying that this is not good enough to be higher. It's just, you know. It's just, it's where we are today. Yeah. So where are we next? Um, so that was... This is a very special one, isn't it? 
And this is 1974. So we had Leur No Blanc one really was, knows much about this. Was, was 1912, and that was Jacques Guélin. Now we are to 19, what did I say, 1974. Jean Paul Guélin. Wait, wait for the reveal, wait for it to focus. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. It's Ode Guélin. This, I, I love this. That's I've gone stuff. through a couple of bottles of this. I always reach for, for this. Uh, in the summer. I mean, it's in a way, it's not that um, groundbreaking, perhaps. I mean, you know, it's 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 an old fragrance now, but it it, it is a very much in the traditional kind of cologne vein, isn't mm. it? But it's, it's just it's from the seventies, but actually, it's I think brain. it's as close as you'll find to the stuff that they were making pre jicky I think that's mm. that's as close as you'll find in terms of just. What what does um what does Luca Turin say about that fragrance? He says something like that fragrance is to Cologne what the mandolin is to the six stringed guitar, or something like that. You know, whether it's double strings, it's it just it yeah, does or, everything. It's so, so much better. And it's interesting. Something like uh, like Herbe Fresca uh, <laughs> from the um what they called Aqua Allegorica. What what are they called? Yeah, Allegoria. Yeah. Allegory, yeah. It, this has got a, a relation to Herbe Fresca in that it's got that mintiness in the cologne, but I've always just preferred this to... Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it is really beautiful. And people do or could complain of it that, that it has, you know, it's, it's very ephemeral, it's very short-lived. That citrus doesn't last long. Yeah, the citrus doesn't last long, but then you're left with the flowers and a little bit of gentle wood underneath. And also... I like it in the middle of the summer when it's really, really hot. And I would just take a little decant and just just top myself off. Uh, you know, went, top myself off. Yeah. Top myself up. No, don't um, do that. <laughs> yeah, um, well, absolutely. It's just one of those fragrances that you can so apply good. liberally and enjoy. Yeah. <sighs> you know, you're not, not every fragrance has to be a bloody beast mode, you know, 24 hour projection bomb. <laughs> it's some, sometimes nice to just have a little hint of something that. Mm. Puts a smile on your face, I think. It just oh, fizz and energy and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now... and this, and this next one is is really a masterpiece, isn't it? And we're getting closer and closer to yeah. Again, it's incredible territory. that n number six. Again, I'm my bottle's quite low. This is one when I get into it. I wore it a lot in the spring of um uh well what, what, last year now when we were entering lockdown i wore it a lot actually even on quite cold days which is surprising if you can read it it is après long day after the rain i mean this oh. talking about debussy that one really is. yeah talk about you know this is bottled melancholy and this is maybe why you know i, I prefer wearing this to leur bleu even even though they do some similar things for, for me you know um i don't know something about leur bleu feels more like you're about to go out it's got more of that association of glamour and the suggestion of kind of fur coats and and the, the um the blue hour meaning this kind of time in the evening just before you get glammed up and go out whereas Après yeah, Day it's more of an evening fragrance isn't it feels oh wow it's so amazing oh, i really want to try and experience some older versions of this if people know because that's is, one though where I, I wonder how it would stand up in the older versions compared to some yeah. of the big heavy hitting orientals oh it's so good and the iris in there is really oh. it's incredible isn't it I love and a lot this. more transparent and clear somehow yeah but yet if you it were a lot more in, light sort of streaking through it when i wore it in the spring i was actually wearing it a lot and kept like topping it up and as i was walking out and going you know, on walks and seeing bluebells and things start to bloom. This kind of really worked beautifully then. But actually, it's also lovely, like on a summer's evening, to put on after an evening shower. Yeah, I bet. It's so, it's, it feels so, as opposed to Leur Bleu, which is, it feels a little bit, bombastic isn't right the word, but, you know, a little bit kind of showy off. Après Londres is, is much more introverted and, not shy as in terms of performance, yeah. but oh. Oh. it's just a bit. It's a bit, a bit more res reserved and melancholic, and yeah, sort of. It has a quiet presence, but somehow makes you no feel more, a bit sad no as well. Powerful. Yeah, oh, totally. Oh. It's a very melancholic thing, but Iris does that to me. I, I always find Iris to be 
yeah. to have that association, a slightly yeah. sort of funereal tone. Apart from something like Iris Silver Mist, which just makes me feel weird. <laughs> it's just Iris, Iris, Iris all the way. It's you know, great stuff, isn't it? And was there a rumour that they were discontinuing that? Yes, I think, yes. Is there some there, sort of... There is. I mean, there, uh, there were lots of yeah, things about... That would about, be mental. I mean, I think lots lots of the fragrances, they are... Or, or they're going to go to more expensive lines or almost... Yeah, I think a lot of these these great fragrances are disappearing to make way for the you know the the fiftieth flank of Le Petit Renoir or another flank of of, of Chalamar Light or whatever it is. Um, anyway, crazy, but let's not worry about that. Let's let's go with no, the They're still here for now. The next fragrance. So where are we next? We're into the sixties uh, now, I think. Yeah, we're we're back to Jean Paul Guerlain. That was Jacques Guerlain. We're back to Jean Paul Guerlain, nineteen sixty five. One of the greatest yes. masculine fragrances ever made. I remember when you introduced me this um, to me. I remember this was a stage when I was saying I didn't like anything with citrus, and then I and then I smelt this, yeah. and it had, yeah, of course it's citrus, but but there was so much more underpinning it. There's lots more to enjoy, isn't there? It's, oh, it's great, isn't it? should we reveal? There she is. Yeah. And I've just, just a couple of days, oh. I got this old bottle, which is an uh, Eau de Cologne, which is also, you know, in a way, it feels like it's quite faithful, you know, to that kind of cologne, to have a, a, an Eau de Cologne. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's just, it's... I'm dying to try that one. It's just, in a way, it's not anything massively kind of revolutionary. It's kind of citrus on some florals with some leather, which, which doesn't sound... Yeah. You know, there are so many fragrances that have done that, but even the, the modern formulation of the EDT is such a complex, it's a fragrance that just unfolds with you all day. And yeah. it's another one, I think I prefer the EDT to the EDP because it's a little bit more transparent and it just yeah. opens up. And it's, I was, I was saying to you, it's a real masterpiece. I was saying this. Um, I've only got this um, a couple of days ago. This um, uh, Eau de Cologne, and, and I found. I, I think it's this. Is, this bottle is from 1982, so nearly 40 years old, older than me. Um, and it, um, it. I feel a bit of the citrus top has gone. I, I, I didn't. I don't get anywhere near the the kind of bright citrus opening I get with the modern one. So maybe that's you know that's, that's the thing with the bottle. But what I noticed with this. Uh, wearing this is the leather is so rich and by the time you get to the mid everything feels thick and rich and beautiful and the way that those florals are coating the leather in the mid and is really uh, indulgent it smells indulgent and expensive and the, the citrus that I do get is not necessarily bright and fizzy but I was saying to Joe it's like cordial it's thick and gloopy yeah and and I find this a bit more ambry. I just think that... Go on, sorry. No, no, you go, you go. I was going to say, just think that that bottle is 17 years old. As it, In terms of its, its, you know, its proximity to the, first, to the first batches of this fragrance. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. You know, it's... So, it, you know, it was, it was as fresh and, and sort of faithful as you could possibly get, I think, mm. without being from the 60s itself. But you know, it's um, it's going to be a different league to the stuff that's out there today. I think, in terms of the the quality of the notes and the and the actual blending that's been done. But even uh, even then, you know, where's my where's my new bottle? Like, you know, I, I've got I've got one of the, the same ones as you. One one of these. This is nearly polished off, so I'll, I'll have to replace it. Um, quite low. But even this stuff is magic. It's absolutely magic. Yeah. For the price, the price is nuts. You can get something which smells that good for the price. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, top five. This was difficult. Top five. We, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say the discussion was heated, but the no, discussion. No. <laughs> the, it, this 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 five. You know, on a different day, it could it, be it, totally different, couldn't it? And and I think we should we should just stress that these are our favorite fragrances. 
not the best. And, and you're going to see there are there are some missing from this list. We'll discuss that afterwards. The kind of the, the kind of omissions and things. Right. Do you want, are you, you well, do your reveal because you've got a better bottle. Well, this is this is where Gerland really all started in terms of the the modern frame. Modern Gerland, yeah. And this is 1889, and Jiki. Um, this is this is a it's not vintage vintage, but I I think I want to say this is 80s 90s sort of territory. I might be wrong. It might be from two weeks ago, and that's the EDP of Jiki right there. And this is just massive, fantastic quality citrus, civet. And there's the lovely bee bottle. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Civet, vanilla, lavender. I mean, it's really, it's really simple, but amazingly complex. And that, that tonka, that coumarin, that, you know, you know the, the thing which makes it oh. a modern perfume. Oh. It's absolutely incredible. It's so... And it's oh, so it's, dirty and fresh. It's, but it's dirty, it's fresh, but then it's so comforting sometimes. It's one of, the, you know, of yeah. all the fragrances here. I, I find it, it, it yeah, it's it's just an absolute hagen. The way the lavender is used is so, there's no kind of uh, medicinal quality or potpourri quality to the lavender. It's so, uh, the way it's integrated is just so comforting. It's and very rich. It, it, yeah, it's rich. But yeah, but yeah. That, it's a real but, journey, this one as well. Oh, it's, uh, and, and this is, you know, this is kind of real galan. And, and all of these, you know, the top 10 especially, they take you on a journey and they evolve, they are complex and they yeah. are rewarding. And I mean, they smell great on other people, but they are for me, I wear them for me to enjoy the experience and enjoy the the journey. And Yeah, I mean, they they really are, they're really fragrances to, to sort of live with and experience unfolding. And that's something that a lot of modern perfumes don't do. Even modern Yeah, they, yeah. You know, they don't take you on anything like the sort of journey that some of these yeah. things do. Um, and also there's the kind of like I, I love all this so this is Amy Gelin and and it's, I think it was knit for um, a girlfriend of his called um, Jack, uh, Jacqueline or something like that yeah. who was studying in, in, in London so kind of a long way away and it was the kind of it, it's got this kind of sense of longing and lust there's definite there's a real human lustful quality to this yeah it's very sensual really sensual I, I think a masterpiece. I mean, it could have, it could have easily been number one. Yeah, but not today. I mean, we've we toyed, haven't we? We've we've tried, but we. Just, so the next, the next one is is one which our number four is one you might be surprised. It's only number four. You know, in many ways, I almost think of this as one of the most you fragrances. Yeah, well, I <laughs> I, I I feel the same absolutely, and this is. Uh -huh. This is from, is it 1985, I want to say? 85, 85? yeah. So it's yeah. Jean-Paul Guerlain again, yeah. Um, Jean-Paul Guerlain, and a fragrance that was not, like all great things, not appreciated in its lifetime. And it was a bit of a flop, and then has been reissued in the in the sort of more modern up, up market collection of Guerlain. And that is Derby. And that's the little eau de toilette. Um, and I have, it's interesting actually, because I have, I have the modern one there as well, which comes in the. You got you got uh, the modern one first, didn't you? I got this one first, yeah, and yeah, I'd smelt I, the thing is I'd smelt this back in the day. I remember it being on the. I remember it being on the shelves with the likes of Abbey Rouge and Heritage. Yeah. I remember Derby was just was part of that lineup. Um, <laughs> there it is, and that's the that's the sort of that's, eagle thing, isn't it? Which is incredible. Yeah. So this is actually an aftershave one, but yeah. And I mean, this is just, this is like a masterpiece of leather and, and patchouli and moss and It, it must be the greatest masculine leather fragrance. And that's saying something really, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, I think it could easily be up there. I mean, it's, it's just mad that it wasn't appreciated in its day. I can't, I can't see any reason why not, because it's just incredible. And it's also the modern good. stuff is more of a fougere to me. And this is yeah. more of a leather sheep Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. And again, and, and when you wear it as well, even the, kind of the aftershave, because I haven't worn, I've only smelt your uh, EDT, you know, when we just sprayed it on cards, I've not really worn on flesh. But to wear that, to wear the aftershave on skin, 
it, you just get so much more so much development and even though yeah. there's this kind of like hyper masculine like hairy chest beating quality to it, it it's got beautiful complex florals filling out the mid yeah before you get yeah. to that base and oh. it's another another real journey of the fragrance and you know the, the blending is so smooth it's so well done you know you you just don't get designers of that quality these days at those sort of prices i mean now you're paying silly money aren't you for, for either the the modern version or the you know even more for the vintage although yeah. actually no that my vintage bottle cost me less than the modern EBT. Oh, really? yeah. i mean it is i mean i was lucky i mean you, if you look on etsy you could be talking like hundreds of pounds i actually got this so this is what is this uh 60 mil aftershave i know it looks empty but that's because I, i've decanted most of it into an atomizer um but i only paid i think 65 quid for that which was is on, is on a, a facebook going. group so it's kind of an insane price so that's really good going. so where are we i mean this is where things get top I three top three can you guess what they're going to be maybe uh, the one right. with angelina jolie <laughs> and that other one that I see on posters. No, no, no. I'm wrong. I'm kidding. I mean, this this next, you know, it, it's so difficult to do these. I mean, the number two, you might think people might think it's higher than it should be, but I, I was I really had to put the, the number two high up. Number three is there. It is. There it is. Um, it's Shalimar. It, you know, it, she's the queen. Of Orientals, and I know I'm I know I'm showing this this um this this vintage X-ray bottle, which is, you know, it's a little bottle of, of, of heaven. But one of the reasons as well why it's so high, even if you the brand new modern EDP is just magical, completely unisex, leathery Oriental bliss. It just seems incredible to me that even the modern version, which is, you know, it doesn't smell as great as this old x-ray stuff. You can have it for 40 quid or something like that, 40, 50 quid. Yeah. And it smells, it's ultra elegance. It's beauty. It's a work of art. And, and for also the kind of the story it's telling about this, this romance in the Shalimar gardens, it's so sensual. There's a hint of the exotic whilst also yeah. something familiar and comforting. Oh God. Yeah, what can you say about it's, Shalimar? It, for I mean, me, it's it's that that vanilla, but also that dirtiness as well. Yeah, just that slight bit of of skank, Oof. just just I'm enough not... to kind of make it a bit risque. Yeah. Oh, this. I mean, Absolute this genius. is this this. You know, Nineteen twenty-five and still going strong. Uh, yeah. Uh, for for um, you know, my 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 little bottle here. Obviously, it's 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 old and it's not going to last forever, but it's. It, you know, it's it's a real special occasion. You know, yeah, it's the evening yeah. after shower, just before you go to bed. If you think you're feeling lucky, kind of fragrance. Yeah, it's um, a very it's a very private sort of fragrance. Yeah, for but for me, it's really like it's sexy as fuck as well. It really is. Like it really yeah. is. There's a lot of raunch behind that. Uh, speaking of which, what are our top two? This is another. This is another so, masterpiece. Yeah. So, I mean, th th this is one which people might not. People might be surprised. It, it, it is where it is for me. This is. I remember when Joe first uh, sprayed this, this this fragrance on me. This was, you know, I would alongside um, Timbuktu from La Tisane Perfume. When when Joe sprayed me that, I was like, wow, this is kind of this amazing exotic thing. When I smelled this fragrance by Gaila, yeah. I was just transported to this other world i was immediately it took me back it's probably about it was probably about um yeah it's probably about 2004 when you when you sprayed it to me so it, it took me back exactly a century so this is mouchoir yeah. de monsieur um so this is my bottle uh, which i got uh, from the the guerlain uh, boutique on the champs Elysees. such a nice bottle as well so i, I mean, it, there is strong rumor that this is being not if not discontinued it's going to be pushed into one of the more expensive lines it's no going to be no longer going to be available as cheaply as it is now which is 40 50 quid so my god i mean so joe's got the the, the modern stock up there. and and for, so this is this is jacques guerlain's take 
Uh, it's basically it's it's a masculine jicky, and we, we, as we were discussing this, we you know beforehand we thought perhaps jicky is more obvious one to be in the top kind of three spots, but I just prefer wearing. I don't care. I it's not what's better. I prefer wearing yeah. mouchoir de monsieur. There's something about there's more twang of that civet in the front, and it just makes it just automatically. It does not smell like a modern perfume there's just something which smells magical uh and 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 it's something i really love you know i'm i'm not doing any performing most of the time i would spend my life performing in black tie and white tie i'm not doing it at the moment but wearing this transports me to a life of wearing black or white tie being surrounded by you know bright lights and chandeliers and stages and things like that and it just it smells like glamour yeah it's also got raunch to it. It's got that lavender, which is comforting and familiar. For me, it's just it's it's a it's an all and out gem, isn't it? There's there's no two ways about it. And it you know it does it does feel somehow because it's so classical and because it's so old, it feels modern all over again. Because it you know yeah. just the act of wearing it is is a kind of a daring thing. I think. And I think the, the fact that there's, wearing something of that, yeah, it almost that feels kind of ultra niche because there's nothing else quite quite like it around. I mean, there's there's the um, there are things which are in the similar ballpark. I always think that uh, the Le Galion special for gentlemen is a similar kind of ballpark. Yeah. It's a bit more resinous and it doesn't have the kind of civet vibe to it. Uh, but I don't know. And 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 this is it's this glorious. is the one you know when I was when I was in the, the Galion shop, do I said I thought do I or do I buy something I haven't got or um. Or do I just go for a bottle of mushroom? It's a shame they weren't engraving because sometimes they can engrave, and I could have got wafts in the loft engraved yeah. on it, um, but sadly not. Anyway, I've got another normal bottle as well. This is just my kind of safety backup bottle. That's a backup, isn't it? So where are we now with number one? I mean, this is this is guess, the, the crowning can you, glory. Can you guess it? what's going to be? I mean, interestingly, numbers two to ten we struggled with yeah. but number one we didn't did we it just felt like the only one that could really land in that spot somehow yeah to me and almost 100 years old 101 years old there she is and yeah. there's its big big brother right there that is so, absolutely the coolest little bottle in the world Oh, it's beautiful. I, I, I was so lucky that oh, you know when 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 I, when I bought this, it was, was basically kind of slightly mislabeled, and and it's a 1980 X-ray, which I got for about like 80 quid or something. Um, it's it, it, it's just magic. I mean, especially I mean, I, I I really really enjoy the modern EDP, but this this stuff is absolutely. I, I find it difficult to describe. It's just. If you've watched our channels, you know we quite love um, we love we love a sheep bread. I mean, a sheep bread yeah. is just that balance of bright and dark, some fresh, singy fruits, giving way to things which get darker and richer and bitter as you go on. And I know it's it might seem hackneyed to say, "Oh, Mitsuko is the mother of all sheep bread," but she really is the queen. It, and, it really is, yeah. And and especially, I I think this forty year old bottle smells more modern than the modern stuff because the the, fr yeah. the fruit in this is so explosive and so real and 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 the, the the spice in the middle of this is something i don't think you get so much in the in the modern edp and edt formulations no and, the, and then when you get to the oak moss it's bitter and it's rich and it's utterly sensible. it's the real thing as well that's worth reminding people as well it is oak moss oak moss it's not it's not some legal adherent to Ifra. No. As much as Ifra is a good thing, I mean, I think that's one thing that makes, just as in vintage Jiki, it's the musks that make it really alive. I think yeah. in this, it's it's the real oak moss. I mean, I think that's why... And the it... real bergamot as well, the proper, you know, proper use of bergamot. And that's why it, it's tricky, really, because if, if I were to compare the modern... EDP of Shalimar and the modern EDP of Mitsuku, I would definitely choose Shalimar. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah, I mean, again, that, that's why it, we, we're not being completely objective with this, with, with this video. If we're talking about the X-rays, I prefer my vintage X-ray of Mitsuku to my vintage X-ray of Shalimar. 
every day of the week. So there we go. Number yeah, I mean, one. it's it's a house full of masterpieces, and that's just where we are today, I think, isn't it? So here's so here's a, a question for you. I've which ones? I mean, I know we've got gaps, but which ones, Joe? Do you want what? What is on your hit list? Um, things I don't currently have. I would like, I would like a bottle of Nahima. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't have. Um, I would, I would also actually like to try some of the the things I smelt in in the boutique in Paris. Um, Iris Ganache, I really enjoyed. Mm. Um. I think I, I probably just for the sake of, of completeness, would like to get something like Apre Londe before it goes or before it gets changed. Yeah. I've smelt it so, for so many years, but um, that's that's definitely in need of, of being added. And I, th- I think actually the thing I want to get more than anything is some um, some extras, some vintage extra. So I think I think definitely Mitsuko. I think definitely Shalimar. If I can, if I can find a good deal, they, on they do, they do crop up, and especially what you want. I mean, what, when I bought mine, I mean, sometimes you see them go for hundreds, but you just need to kind of look out for ones which aren't named properly, like one which just says Mitsuku, doesn't say the concentration, doesn't say the amount, and, and I just kind of looked at the bottom. I thought that's an extra. The bot, the the box looks a yeah. little bit old. Fingers crossed, bought it, and then you check the batch number. It's it's a sort of a bit of a trust and judgment exercise, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, and. And yeah, I guess I guess you, you kind of take a gamble, but that's why you're better to go for these ones. There are obviously some people know what they've got, and that's why they're three hundred quid. Yeah, yeah, but but also you know these, these fragrances were produced on a large scale, so there were a lot of them churned out. So there are lots which have been they're like, out you there. Know, yeah, they are out there, so they're possible to get. For me, Vol de Nuit is one I, I've been wanting to get. Um, yeah, and I've been looking. I mean. So it comes in the B bottle, uh, the modern formulation, which people say is pretty good, the modern EDT. Um, but I'm a real, real, real sucker for that propeller bottle, yeah. that X-ray bottle of any perfume bottle ever produced. I love that. And also because I think it goes with the whole aesthetic that it's to do with the, uh, you know, the glamour and the excitement of flight, you know, which like flight now, commercial flight on easy jet or, Ryanair or those horrible airlines is so unglamorous but imagine in the 20s how exotic and that's yeah. one of the things which attracts me about this house it just transports you to that exoticism and that bottle Absolutely. I mean I know it's about the juice but uh, that bottle but it's an amazing bottle it is it is an amazing bottle yeah but also yeah Nahima and um, what's the other one the rose that's a rose one. Oh, um, no, what's the sandalwood uh Samsara. Samsara. Samsara, yeah. That's yeah, Samsara's Samsara is the other one. Yeah, I've got a bottle of that somewhere. I don't know where that is. Oh. It must be in a, it must it's either in the house or it's in Earl's Court. Well when we do our top seventeen, we'll include it. We'll bring it we'll bring it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, what a house. I mean what a house. There, I mean, of course, I mean there are more. There is, you know, Jedi which we which we smelt in the Osmotech. Yeah. Uh, not in, we didn't smell it in the Osmotech. We smelt it in the uh, the Gala shop, didn't we? We asked them to go yeah. Even though we hadn't paid for the tour, we managed to get her to take some things out it from behind. Great. And yeah, that was magical. But, you know, that you're talking thousands of pounds. Yeah. Uh, I know there was the, the, the newer version, which Thierry Vasser did. Uh, but especially if you want the original stuff, thousands. I still want one of the Mouchoir de Monsieur, the escargot bottles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, They're very again, nice. But you're talking hundreds and... Yeah. Oh, but anyway. for the juice itself, we're lucky that a lot of these have survived. So many of them, so many masterpieces. Which is good. Oh, I always, no matter, and I think one of the reasons we wanted to do this video is I felt, especially over the last year, with everything as it is, I felt myself going back to these old fragrances to remind me of, you know, my journey, like when Joe, like when we would just f- first shared them together, but also to remind me of, they always make me think of glamorous places, getting dressed up, going out, beautiful restaurants yeah, exactly. and, and and like and, and on our time we went to paris going to the osmotech going to the champs Elysees, having great food and great wine and great smells it's what it's all about yeah and soon to return again i hope 
But the, I mean, that is what it's all about. And these are all for experiences and they're, you know, they're all, all about um, memories and place and time travel. And that's why they transcend perfume. They transcend what is the sort of toiletry products that are released today across the, the world. They're so much more. I mean, they are a real work of art. The number of hundred-year-old fragrances, we've got well, 100 or more, 120, 130-year-old. Mm. I mean, how many fragrances now are you going to have? I just, it, it, it will never be the same because of the pro 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 proliferation of um, fragrances at the moment. There's so many to compete, so it's, it's impossible that anything will, will stand the test of time, I think. If a few do, then it's great, but I think, I think well, these are the benchmark to measure against. Yeah. Maybe office, yeah. maybe office for men will be. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I let us know. Obviously, we've missed out. There are seven hundred fragrances, and we've only done sixteen. We've missed out loads and loads. Um, do you let us know, like any, yeah, if you've got any top tips about where to find um, vintage uh, uh, formulations, or if if there are any particular, yeah. like for instance, for for Voldemort, should I get? A modern X-ray? Should I get a, a, try and get an old X-ray, or is the the new EDT is that good enough? Um, or any others which we just don't know? I mean, don't tell us. Yeah, let us know. Don't tell us about this, like you know, the Gelang Quidoracy, which is completely impossible to buy in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, but but you know, if there's anything else which we can get our hands on, send just it send us. it, to, or, or just send it to us. Yeah, that'd be yeah. that'd be interesting. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So there we go, Gelang. Brilliant. Until next time, happy sniffing. <laughs>